Welcome everyone to the 2023 Virtual Sweet Potato Field Day. Today uh, I'm going to be talking about our clean seed program. My name is Dr. Jeff Davis. I am a field crop entomologist with the LSU Ag Center. And once again, uh, talking about our clean field seed, uh, seed project. This project involves all the sweet potato producing states. It is a collaborative project. I'm going to be talking about what it is and what we're trying to do. So what is the Clean Seed Project? The Clean Seed Project is to produce a national standard for clean seed for sweet potato. Now because sweet potato is a vegetatively propagated crop, it can acquire viruses, diseases, pests uh, over time. So much like sugarcane, much like potato, we need to have a program to keep that seed clean. Now, Traditionally, all the states have some sort of program that goes on to keep sweet potato seed clean. But this is to create a national standard so that we can be able to, growers can be able to produce seed and be able to sell it across different state lines. They already do so, but this was so that everyone's at the same playing field. Now what happens is with vegetatively propagated crops like sweet potato, as you cut them, as you grow them, as you continue to produce new seed and new plants throughout the year, they can acquire these diseases. Now, of those important to sweet potato in the United States are the potiviruses. The four main potiviruses in sweet potato are sweet potato feathery model virus, sweet potato virus 2, sweet potato virus C, and sweet potato virus G. Now, why are they named that way? Well, if you want to go find Dr. Chris Clark, who had been working on those for 40 plus years, he's retired, or go see Dr. Imana Power. Maybe she can give you a little more update on why they're named that way. I think there's some traditions behind that. Needless to say, these viruses are quickly acquired by aphids. That are their, those are their main vectors. So once again, soft-bodied insects that are flying around, thousands of different species that can be found any th time throughout the year can quickly acquire these viruses within 30 seconds of them probing on the leaf tissue. They probe on the leaf tissue because that's how the aphid knows if it's an appropriate host to feed on and reproduce on. So it probes, can quickly acquire these viruses because they're located in those epidermal tissue, can then move and transmit the virus very quickly. So uh, the aphid traps that we have are pan traps. These have water in them and propylene glycol. Uh, they have a colored tile as I said aphids are attracted to different colors and so we have yellows and greens testing out which one is more attractive and these catch aphids that are landing in the field so they will be able to know what species might be moving at certain times of the year uh, the number of aphids that are moving in and if those we can take those aphids take them back to the laboratory and test those for the different viruses which ones might be having which of the sweet potato potiviruses I talked about before. Now, when we know aphids are moving, we have to control them. Typically, when we talk about insects, we use insecticides to control those. Well, because we have so many insects, so many aphids species moving throughout the field, and because these aphids can acquire the virus within less than 30 seconds, none of our insecticides can keep the aphids from, prevent them from transmitting the virus. So we are looking at stylet oil. Some of the projects we have right here within this section, we have different stylet oils. These are oils that are crop oils. These are already used in, in apples and pears to keep other kinds of insects away. Uh, they're used in potato production, so we're testing those in sweet potato production. Previous work I've done in potatoes said we can't go beyond a 4% by volume application rate because you'll get phytotoxicity. So the percentage by volume is not set necessarily on the label. It says by volume that you add it. It's testing the phytotoxicity. Now when I talk about phytotoxicity, that's like having the leaves starting to curl, starting to bleach out. It's almost like when you water your plants under high sunlight, you can create those little beads. Those little beads then become magnifying glasses on those leaves and can burn the leaf tissue. Well, some of the work we're doing here, uh, we're looking at up as high as 10% and we're applying them weekly. So far, we've seen no phytotoxicity. These oils prevent the aphid from acquiring the virus. 
Uh, work that I've done in the laboratory has also shown that these aphids don't like landing on plants that have stylet oils. If they do land, they have a problem trying to probe and find uh, and determine a different host. And so if we're going to put that out there, we can try to start reducing the number of viruses we're seeing. And then of course at the end of the year, we're going to harvest storage roots and test those for the virus. Another way to prevent virus movement that we're working on in this project is the looking at crop borders. Crop borders are planting a barrier crop alongside the main crop that you're trying to protect. For this way, we're going to be using uh, sweet potato is our main crop. Our barrier crop can then be soybean or peanut. Uh, some work in California, they've planted, uh, Scott Stoddard has planted some peanuts next to his sweet potatoes. He sent us some pictures, they look very good. And what these barrier crops do is that the aphids will first land on those before they move into the field, because aphids are edge colonizers. They're coming in from outside, moving to the edge of the field. When they land on peanut or soybean, they probe again, trying to determine if it's appropriate host, and they can lose the virus. Essentially, they're cleaning their style at mouth parts. It's like having a dirty needle, and then you're putting it in something and cleaning it out, it then loses the virus. And so when those aphids then pick up and move into the sweet potato, they don't have the virus as long as your sweet potato is clean. So once again, the importance of starting clean and staying clean throughout the year. Now, one of the problems we have in sweet potato is visually easily identifying virus infection. Many of the viruses that we have, the four, don't really show good symptomology throughout the year. They may look almost asymptomatic at that point. So some projects that are going on are looking at how can we visualize these viruses better. One of those projects is to use a different technology, perhaps some drones that then have different lenses attached that can look at the light spectra that are coming off those leaves. If we can then identify those leaves that are infected easily, we can go to the field, rogue out those plants, and know even before we harvest that those infected plants are gone. Once again, removing that virus inoculum, so those, if those aphids do come in, they're not acquiring and moving that virus. And finally, what is the value of clean seed? So part of that project uh, is looking at what can growers expect from clean seed? Will they get a premium for it? And if all the technology that we're doing all the work that we're doing, what is its value? And that's the most important part, of course. We want to know from a production level, as well as what is the value of our clean seed. So work that's been done in the past has shown that when we plant our sweet potato fields, as we have out here, uh, within one year you can have almost 100% infection when you go to harvest. So that just shows you how quickly you can start with no infection, in the field and you can end up with 100% of your sweet potato storage roots having the virus. So why is that? Like I said, quickly acquired, quickly transmitted. So we need to be able to start clean and stay clean. Now staying clean is going to be the difficult part, right? We can start clean very easily. We already have virus tested tissue culture that goes on. State of Louisiana produces some very good seed that way too. Once those are grown, those plants are then taken to a greenhouse. Now here's where we need to start right away, starting clean, staying clean. We go to the greenhouse. What happens in a greenhouse? We need to understand, are the viruses coming in from outside of the field? Because virus inoculum is very important. What weeds host those viruses? That's part of our project, trying to understand what weedy hosts are there. Sweet potato itself can be a weedy host. If you have it around in your garden, it could be, you know, there are various um, varieties that are planted for ornamental sweet potatoes. Those, if they can accumulate the viruses just as well as the ones that we grow for food production. And so those can be sources. So one way to cut down an inoculum, as I said before, is to stay clean and start clean. In the greenhouse, we'll be monitoring for our vectors. We'll be making sure we use different treatments and different ways to keep that clean within that greenhouse. Once then, our nuclear seed will go out to the field. These can be then planted and we're gonna be able to bulk that seed up. So typically, in potato production, 
A grower will then take that nuclear seed lot, go to the field, bulk it up, have it then tested and sold the next year. The same idea for sweet potato. We're gonna bulk up that seed, have those slips available or perhaps storage roots that can then be sold as seed. So again, greenhouse, then we get to the field, as I said. One of the projects we're working on, as I mentioned before, weeds, looking at weeds and whatever weed hosts might be for the vector, like I said, for aphids, or could be for the virus itself. So if we need to clean up our weeds, what weeds do we need to make sure that we remove from the field? So one of the main weedy pests for some of the aphid vectors I was talking about is smell melon. So smell melon uh, is the progenitor of the melons that you eat, cantaloupes, uh, honeydews, things like that. Uh, and one of the main aphid vectors for our sweet potato virus is the cotton aphid. Cotton aphids, also common name, melon aphid. So it's on your smell melon. Uh, some of those smell melon you don't want to have next to your field like we have here, but this allows us to test if we get aphids on our smell melon, how does that movement from those aphids from the smell melon to the sweet potato affect virus transmission? And so we're looking at some of that. You as a grower don't want to have these smell melons next to the field. I, as a researcher, of course, put them there. So we're looking at that kind of movement. Some of the previous work that's been done has shown that the wild morning glories that are around your field are hosts for these viruses. And so keeping those down and keeping them out of your field is important as well. So these kind of areas where you see weeds in these natural areas, the nice to see, but they're not good for our viruses, right? These weeds, many of these things that are here within this area could be sources for the virus. Could then aphids land on these and then move them into the field over there? Of course. And so one of the work that we're doing is to look at, uh, there appears to be at least a few morning glories in here, as well as other kind of grasses. So all season long, these are gonna be growing, perhaps providing inoculum source, aphids land, grab, and can move out into the field. And so understanding that kind of movement is important to keeping our seed clean. But if we set a standard nationally, we can then all be on the same playing field and all of our crop will be able to be produced equally and have very high yield. And finally, thank you to all our donors and grantees for uh, being able to provide us the monies that we continue to be able to do this work. Uh, the, most importantly, the Sweet Potato Commission, thank you very much for your continued support. And thank you also for all our collaborators, our producers, and being able to get that money from the United States Department of Agriculture to be able to do this work. This is a five-year grant. We're just starting on it, and we look forward to being able to give you the best management practices to keep your seed clean. Thank you very much.